Hi, this is Mrs. Brobel. This is Chapter 6, Periodic Table and Periodic Law. In Part 1, we're going to look at the development of the periodic table and what are the key features of the periodic table. Then we're going to discover why elements in the same group have similar properties. So there was a man by the name of Lavoisier in the 1700s, and we talked about him in the last chapter. He decided that he was going to compile all the known elements. Now if you look in this table, some of the elements actually don't look right. And I'll just show you. Light and heat, at the time, they didn't know that that was not matter. We know now that it is. <clears throat> and then he talked about deflagisticated air. Um, they did a lot of experiments with mercury oxide. So phlogiston is a version of mercury oxide. However, his antimony is correct, his silver, cobalt, copper, those are all elements. And his nonmetals here, sulfur and phosphorus, are correct. Um, some of these are French named elements that really aren't elements. And then um, the earths, they didn't realize that chalk was a combination of elements along with clay and siliceous earth. Okay, so after uh, Lavoisier, there was another man by the name of Newland, and his picture is at the bottom there. Um, he was able, with the aid of spectroscopy, to actually test a lot of these elements and to find consistent data for these elements. <clears throat> So what he did is he actually decided that he was going to arrange things according to increasing atomic mass. So that was the um, general thought at the time. Now what he noticed is that he called them octaves. The elements actually repeated every eighth element. So here he called these octaves. And you might notice that if you look across the table, he doesn't go all the way. He actually stops almost at the end with oxygen. <clears throat> and then he carries it back over to fluorine, which is near the end of the periodic table. Um, unfortunately, his idea didn't go very well. A lot of people had problems with the octaves. Um, they thought, how could you equate music with science? And as a result, not many people accepted his idea. Okay, now there was another two gentlemen, Meyer and Mendeleev. They're in the upper left-hand corner there. Um, they decided that there was a repeating pattern with uh, elements, and they looked at atomic mass and properties of the elements. There were some problems with their idea, um, and I'll show you that in a little bit here. There were actually some inconsistencies with using atomic mass. And as a result, um, there was a man by the name of Mosley. He decided that a better way to arrange things would be using increasing atomic number. And as a result, he got a very clear periodic pattern. So you could see the elements repeat themselves every so often. So this periodic repetition, where we see the increasing um, atomic number, we call this periodic law. So period law is not based on increasing atomic mass, it's based on increasing atomic number. Okay, um, this is actually from your book, and I highly recommend you look at this carefully. Um, this first group here is the alkali metals, and it's all the ones that are listed in green. And then the second group here is alkaline earth metals, and notice that they're all in yellow. The blue is transition metals. Now the gray section here, there really isn't a name necessarily for these individual columns, and I don't expect you to know them, so we're going to ignore them for now. However, right next to the gray columns are halogens. I do expect you to know that this pink group is called the halogens. And then lastly, this is the noble gases, which is in purple. Now these two rows at the bottom, we call these inner transition metals. So 
so these last two rows are inner transition metals and they actually come up here and I'll show you another um, slide why we put them down there okay um, for the groups you want to make sure that you pay attention to these numbers that I'm circling because they're going to be important to know so this I'm, I'm trying not to circle both digits I'm trying to circle the second digit so what these circles represent is actually the valence electrons so in the first column these groups all share one valence electron in the second column they all uh, share two valence electrons and then in, in group 13 only we're looking at three valence electrons and then so on and this is partly the reason why we see a repetition in the chemical and physical properties. Okay, so with this slide, this is where technically the inner transition metal should go, but because we don't want this huge wall hanging, um, the chemists decide to squash everything and just move this two rows of elements to the very bottom. So we know, notice after the third column, that um, these two rows fit in next to that third column there. Okay, um, the reason why I show you this is because um, I wanna talk about periods. Periods are rows, and the reason why it's important to know the um, period number, they're for energy levels of valence electrons. So when you're looking at the energy level of a valence electron in the first column, this would be energy level two for this valence electron. Okay, here's another um, version of the periodic table where we see predominantly the periodic table is made up of metals. So metals make up the largest portion of the periodic table. The deep blue section is the metalloids. And then lastly, the nonmetals are in yellow. And please note that hydrogen, even though it's right above the first column of alkali metals, it technically is a nonmetal. Okay, so please remember that elements originally were organized according to atomic mass. And then eventually, um, thanks to Moseley, they discovered that atomic number was a better reason and I'll go into more details in class about that. Periodic law, please note that when elements are arranged in increasing atomic number, there's a periodic repetition of chemical and physical properties. Please note that columns represent the groups and rows represent the periods. There are three types of elements. They're either metals, metalloids, or nonmetals. And please note that each column, the groups tend to share uh, chemical properties. And then lastly, the period number equals the energy level of the valence electrons for that element.